going on guys welcome back this is going to be part three of our holly terminator install on project hellstang which is our 94 mustang powered by a five liter it's got holly terminator x on it uh holly high ram anderson n41 camshaft pro comp heads whole bunch of stuff on three turbo setup, right? So in the last episode, you saw that we could not get the car to start. It would just have a uh, crank, no start issue. And let me catch you guys up because yesterday I did a little bit of diagnosis. I'm finally back from vacation. And so I finally got a chance after catching up with work to be able to mess with this thing. And what I ended up finding is that we're not getting uh, any power to the fuel injectors, but our fuel pump works. Now, if you're familiar with the Holly Terminator, you may be saying, how is that possible? They're wired up on the same thing. Well, let me show you what I screwed up. Yesterday, uh, first of all, I was using V3 uh, firmware. So uh, one of the guys told me, hey, try to go to V2 build 80 just because sometimes V3 is weird. I did that, changed all the firmware and stuff again. Didn't change anything, still crank, no start. So then next we went and we verified that we had spark so the way i did that is i actually have a little spark tester out oh, right here so this thing i just got off amazon and basically it just connects into the spark plug on that side and then you just put your wire on this side it's got a little light in here and so it lights up so i checked for both sets of coil packs both sides both of them had power so i was thinking i was i was 99 sure that was our issue it wasn't so that's freaking awesome. Then I had a little Noid light, which I ended up buying this little set right here off Amazon. It was really cheap, like 20, 25 bucks. So figured it's good to have just for the future. And basically it's just a little light uh, that comes with a bunch of different ones for different connectors. Um, but I think this was the one I used. But anyway, this just plugs in into your little connector for the uh, injector. Crank the car, and if it lights up, you know it's got power. Then you can also double check it with just um, like a regular... Um, a voltmeter so i did i'd use my voltmeter also and i did check that we're not getting any power to the wire so that's not working so i was thinking what the heck i got fuel pressure pumps working why am i not getting this so then i ended up actually talking to the dude uh danny kimber uh from mf customs man that guy freaking helped me out a lot so i was going through it and we're looking at the wiring diagrams and what it is is the green wire for that Holly wants you to hook up for like the fuel pump and for the injectors um, to like a switched power source. I ended up cutting it under the dash because where it comes right out of the uh, the relay, that's where my wire was to connect it to the MF Customs harness. So I thought, oh, I don't need all this extra wire. I'll just cut it right here, right into that wire. Should be good. Well, what that was doing was that was just giving power then to the fuel pump because that trigger wire I connected it to on the MF Customs harness is just for the fuel pump. So what happens is later up in the harness, that green wire gets split. Holly actually splits it to go to the fuel injectors as well as going to the fuel pump. So when I cut it back there, now that splice up here is just doing nothing. And so there's no power at our connector here for the fuel injector. So what I've got to do is go back and where I cut that wire underneath the dash, I got to remove some tape so I can get some access to that wire and then just take that wire and connect it into my other connection or my other wire. <clears throat> and that way it'll, it'll kind of take the place of that factory split, which is somewhere up here. So it should be a really simple thing. And then we're going to have spark and fuel and this thing should light off so if i would have been a moron and cut that if i would have realized this issue you know it should have worked and fired off the first freaking time so anyway i'm gonna go ahead and try to fix this get this all rewired up and then we'll see what happens the dash just to give you guys an idea this is the relay that goes it gives power basically to the fuel pump and to the fuel injectors and it does that through this green wire so again when you get this from holly the wire is actually coming out like right around there and it just had like five feet of wire which i didn't need so i just cut it right there and uh, cut it right here and then i just ran the wire right to this trigger wire which i thought was you know good to go so this actually gives power it sends this power to the fuel pump but we're not getting any power to the injectors because up here farther in the harness is where it splits off right so that was the issue so now we just need to grab this wire out of this loom and then i'm just going to run a little kind of a jumper wire right we'll just run that back and run it either well, i'll probably have to cut this whole connection off but we can just run that together so that this wire plus our our other green wire uh is together along with this and then because it's already connected up there to the connector the split a blah 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 it should all work so 
at least that's what I think. So I'm gonna get started, get this all together, and then we'll verify if we have power up at the injector. I just got the wire all done, and then I just had my wife uh, turn the engine, or turn the uh, power over, just so we could get the pump to work for five seconds. And while that was happening, I verified at the injector connector, we got power, baby. So we're good to go. I just gotta get back under there now, um, finish doing the heat shrink tubing, kind of make sure it's all tucked away, and then I'm gonna verify one more time that we still have power, and clean all this crap up, and we're gonna be ready to try to start this thing, see if we can make some noise. All right, so at this point, I think we are ready to try to start this thing. Um, I have not checked the static timing, so there's a setting in the Terminator where you can kind of lock out like the timing to whatever you want, 15 degrees, 30 degrees. Um, that way you can crank it or start it and let it run, and then get your timing light and actually verify that you what you're seeing at the crank matches what Holly's seeing. Uh, otherwise, what Holly recommended was just to turn the distributor until uh, whatever it actually is, you know, matches the 15 degrees that Holly shows, right? Not going to worry about that for now. I just want to see if it'll start and run. It should start and run, even if it's off a little bit. Um, and then after that happens, then we'll start to check for leaks. Then we can go back, you know, kind of verify um, the timing light and all that stuff. But I can already tell, I was just looking under it just from all this cranking the last two days. Um, I can see where that front, where my oil pressure sensor is, where the factory one is and the aftermarket one, I can see that's still leaking. Um, so that was previously leaking. I thought I got it all tight, but it looks like that's still got some drip. So I did just try to tighten it a little more. Hopefully that fixes it. If not, I'll have to kind of take that all back apart again and get that going. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and try to crank it over. And hopefully I didn't forget anything. You guys heard it's like you can definitely smell fuel coming out you can see it's like a little bit of combustion i'm almost wondering if maybe i don't have this um uh, dual sink dropped in at the right timing you know maybe um instead of having number one cylinder at top dead center maybe i was off on the other stroke or something i don't know but uh because that's kind of what it sounds like like timing's off it's not really firing right um i did look at the uh, data on the laptop Everything looks good as far as I can see. The only thing I see that doesn't really change is like the injector pulse width is like 18.39 milliseconds and it just stays the same. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Maybe my injectors are bad or something. I don't know. I mean, we're definitely getting fuel, but maybe it's not right. They're like some 80 pound uh, Siemens Deca. They're actually knockoffs. So what I'm gonna try right now is I'm gonna crank the motor over. I've got the, the static timing uh, initiated in there right now for 15 degrees. So I'm gonna try to see if I can see the pointer and see if it's at 15 degrees, see if that's kind of messed up really bad. So we'll see if Jack, that works. I couldn't really see shit down there <laughs> on the pointer. Uh, and, and it looks like maybe it's just going too slow, you know, while it's cranking to really see anything. So we'll probably have to wait for that till it, till it actually starts. Now, before we go and chase everything, because I've like I've got my compression tester out, I was ready to check compression. You know, I'm, I'm trying to think maybe the dual sink is just you know it's not dropped in the right way or something. Maybe I should retry that, but that's gonna be a big pain in the butt. So before I do all that, maybe I should go to the gas station and get some gas because when I left this car in the fall, um, I left a very small amount of gas in there because I knew I'd be dropping the tank. I didn't want to have a whole bunch of gas in there, but you know, the fuel lines were open and exposed, you know, disconnected for, uh, for a long time. I almost wonder if that, you know, maybe, maybe that caused some evaporation and stuff too. So, cause there wasn't much in the tank. It looks like there's almost nothing, but the engine sounds like it sort of wants to start. So I wonder if I'm just simply out of gas. So before I waste like 
three hours of my time trying to diagnose and do a bunch of crap. I'm gonna run to the gas station, get a few gallons of gas. We'll toss that in real quick. Let's just see, because that would be super easy and I need some gas anyway from a house for fires and stuff. So I'm gonna do that. And then let's see if that doesn't work, then I'm gonna get out the compression tester. We'll make sure we got compression in the cylinders because we did change the cylinder heads. Who knows if we have bad cylinder heads or maybe the gaskets, you know, I didn't put it on right. Who knows what I screwed up, right? So, but before we do that, let's just throw a little bit of gas in her, see what's up. All right, so we just got four gallons of fuel, fresh fuel, 87 octane baby plugged in there. So four gallons, I mean, that would make it run alone plus whatever was already in there. Let's see if it does anything. My guess, not gonna do anything. I'm thinking maybe we have either an ignition uh, timing problem. We're getting sparks. Maybe it's a timing, you know, with the way the distributor is set or maybe we don't have compression. I'm gonna check that next too. So let's go ahead and try this, see what happens. All right, so I just tried to do some cranking. Uh, now that we got the gas in the car, still didn't help. But one thing I noticed is uh, if I put my foot to the floor, uh, which should shut off the fuel injectors, then we started to get some popping, some more kind of noises, some more action going on. So I'm almost wondering if maybe something's up. You know, in the computer, I have these set as the DECA 80 pounders, which from what I've read online, that's what a lot of people do when they run these aftermarket DECA 80 pounders. But maybe there's something up you know so i'm going to try to do some research real quick try to see if there's anything for that um probably the next thing i'm going to do after that is do a compression test just to make sure we've got some good compression uh on both banks just to make sure nothing wacky happened with cylinder heads uh or the head gaskets i just want to rule that out and then i'm talking to danny he was telling me uh try to verify the timing again too i, I couldn't quite see it like i told you guys earlier so maybe i'm gonna actually remove uh, the turbo inlet pipe uh, from the throttle body that'll give me some more room and then I can try to verify you know just kind of make sure that we have that 15 degrees that's being commanded um, so yeah I'm just gonna keep messing around all right so compression test on number one cylinder uh, it's about a little over 120 125 something like that um, so that's good it looks like it's holding the compression as well so that's really good so pretty stoked um, so i'm going to move on to whatever one's easier on that side just make sure um, those cylinders have some compression at least one of them and uh, after that then i think we're going to move on to trying to check the timing um, the other thing is i pulled the spark plug out this is number one spark plug and you know you definitely can smell fuel it's got a lot of fuel on it so I wonder if something's up. Maybe we need to scale back um, some of the, uh, the the fuel enrichment or whatever. Be All right, guys, it is the next morning and I'm back to trying to mess with this car again. And so at this point, the only thing we really haven't verified, we know we have spark fuel. Um, we know like our dual sync is working, giving an output, all that kind of stuff. But we don't know exactly if maybe I screwed up when I put the dual sync in, like maybe it's off the timing. So I am going to try to check the static timing. I did try to do it yesterday, but that didn't work because uh, I couldn't see it. So I'm going to take off the turbo charge pipe, maybe take off the uh, some of the pulleys, whatever we need to do to be able to see that uh, timing light working and then verify it. I also... Just to make sure I marked the uh, pulley right, I, I marked it before, um, but I also kind of redid it. I cut this piece of uh, little cardstock paper uh, to 2.8 inches, and that should be uh, 50 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this back on the balancer, make sure my timing is right. You know, just that way we can verify that all this stuff is correct. From that point, if it still doesn't start, I don't really know what else to do. It's got to be something in the tune, I would guess, because I can see all the sensors working. So the, my kind of backup plan here is if I can't figure it out by Tuesday, because it's Memorial weekend, then I might try to see if I can actually have the car dropped off at one of the local tuning shops and just have them check the car over, find out what the heck's going on. So we'll see. I did also, I didn't try it yet, but I did also upload uh, some new injector values for my 80 pound injector. So I compared the Siemens DECA actual specs from their website compared with what the Holly has. And they are a bit different. Like the Holly shows them as 80 pound injectors at 43 PSI, but in reality, they're like 76 or something. And so I changed some of the stuff just to match exactly what Siemens has. I doubt it'll do anything, so it's probably pretty close, but we'll see. So anyway, first I'm gonna try this and then we'll, uh, we'll load in the new tune and we'll see what's going on. 
All right, so I ended up remarking my balancer using my little piece of paper that I made. And my other mark was only off a little bit, maybe like quarter of an inch, but I don't know if that's you know part of the issue. So I ended up cutting this out, we did this. But, but I realized, I believe, why this thing's not starting is because when I stabbed the distributor, I'm an idiot and I ended up on the timing pointer thing. I can't show you with the camera because you can't get down in there. But on the timing thing, there's like a flat part on top that says time that's kind of up farther, up towards the top of the motor. And then below that, there's a circle that's right onto the balancer. Now, I thought the circle was what I was supposed to use for my mark. I thought that's what you looked at. Apparently, that's not the case. You're not supposed to use that stupid circle. You're supposed to use the timing mark. So that made uh, wherever I put in the um, distributor, it's off by like literally like that much. So I can't even do the math. I don't know if that's like 80 degrees or if that's like even farther off. I don't know. Or if it's like 20 degrees. But anyway, it's off. So we're going to try to restab the distributor. I already got the uh, belt off. I took off the one pulley so I can hopefully get better access to the distributor. And so I'm going to get this thing set right now to uh, where it should be with the 50 degrees at top dead center on number one cylinder. And then I'm going to pull the distributor out. We'll restab it, get it all reset and everything. And then, fingers crossed, maybe this thing will actually freaking start. All right, guys. So if you look down in here, let me see how, yeah, okay. So see how I have my yellow mark on the time, this part? So because I'm an idiot, last time I used that circle. But see how, you know, I don't know, it's, it's confusing because it looks like the circle might be where you'd put the freaking mark. But so that's how much it was off last time. So I'm trying to think if I had this way down here and it rotates this way, then anyway, way off. But so that should be good. Now I just need to get back in here undo this stupid bolt for the distributor back there, which is a really big pain in the butt. And then I'm gonna try to pull this thing out and then get it all clocked right, resync the, um, you know, the dual sync thing on and off. And then we can try to start. All right, fellas, another little update. So we've got our balancer at 50 degrees before top dead center on compression stroke, blah, blah, blah. So I pulled out the distributor and I re-clocked it back in here so um, you want to have your rotor we don't have a rotor because our rotor would be on top of here but this is where the rotor would be pointing this little kind of divot you want this guy to be pointing at the crank sensor which is this guy right here so these are aligned so now we can actually give the car power and we should have the cam and crank sensor lights both on and then we're going to want to rotate this bad boy counterclockwise our housing counterclockwise to be able to shut off the uh, crank light and then go backwards to have it come back on and then when they both come back on you're good to go this thing is set i can put back on the stupid hold down put back on the stupid cap and then and then we can finally button this thing back up in the front put the belt back on try to start this stupid thing please please let it start baby come on all right, so you can see with power on, we've got both of these bad boys lit up, right? So now we just want to rotate the housing counterclockwise. Can you guys even see? Counterclockwise is this way, right? Oh, she's off. Go back to on. Boom, donezo, that's it, so easy, right? Now we gotta do the hard part, which is get the stupid clamp back on and tighten the hell out of that, then put the top cover on. Then I gotta get the belt back on. We're gonna leave the charge pipe off just in case any more malarkey has to happen. I almost shouldn't even put the belt on. But anyway, I'll put the belt on, so easy. Oh, man, we're getting close, baby. Oh, I'm also gonna wire in the map sensor. I've got this thing going too. So I'll get this thing wired in. This is the uh, two and a half bar GM map sensor. So I had to cut off the Holly, um, the weird Holly connector that it came with and then we got this boy. So we'll get that all done too. And then, and then we can try to start it. Dude, if it freaking starts up, holy cow, I'm going to be so stoked. I didn't forget anything. Um, all right. Let's try to see if it starts.
that's all good. I can see everything else, all the other sensors working. Got fuel pressure. All right, so now it's better. It's kept for getting closer, but now let's go ahead and try it again. Too much fuel, but uh, let's try, let's try one more time. ticking. I mean, it's also kind of hard to hear over the, uh, the, the open downpipe, right? But um, yeah, I guess I should get out. Let me check. Let's check for some leaks and then we'll try to work on um, getting it to stay started, maybe idle a little longer. Uh, but yeah, oh my God, finally, freaking finally, Jesus. And you know, almost all the issues that we've had, I caused them, you know? So in the words of Taylor Swift, I'm the problem, it's me. I mean, you know, from the freaking dual sync thing being off because I used the wrong timing pointer to uh, the wiring issues and stuff that, that I've, I've all caused, right? But it's also, hey, it's my first time doing it, so you learn as you go, right? So these are the things, uh, if I ever did this again, it would certainly be uh, hopefully a lot easier. So, oh, gosh, dang, okay. Boys, we are not out of the race. We can still make it to this thing, man. Oh, feels good, okay. All right, now we just gotta start working on some tuning stuff. Um, I do need to get the map sensor put on. I didn't do it just yet. Um, so we can work on getting that wired in. Um, the GM two and a half bar, or I think it's a three bar. I don't know, it's the LSA map sensor. So we need to get that put in, get that thing connected, which that's gonna be a pain in the ass. Um, from there, dude, it's just we gotta get the exhaust out of there and we can try to take this thing for, you know, for a ride, right? Um, I think we're definitely gonna have to figure out the IAC stuff. You know, that must be some, some trouble with it, you know, starting and stuff. But, oh, feels so good. Feels so good. All right. Let's get back to work, try to get some more stuff done. <laughs> 